When it comes to cars, the future is electric. You saw the ads splashed across the Super Bowl, charging stations popping up all over town. But the thing is, not everyone is on board. Ford, GM, Stellantis, all of the Detroit automakers are moving toward electric, banking on drivers wanting to buy these vehicles. So we asked our WDIV insiders, are you planning to buy an electric vehicle in the coming years? 70% said no. The biggest obstacles to buying now, 42% said the charging infrastructure, 21% said price, 17% said range anxiety, and 15% said they just don't want one. My partner Devin Skillion knows a thing or two <laughs> about charging and range anxiety. Devin, <laughs> explain what's being done to help us overcome that. Well, in fact, you know it really well, too, because Kimberly and I are both members of the electric vehicle family. This is my uh, Mustang Mach-E, which is a vehicle that I absolutely love. And I got to tell you, it's kind of nice to drive past a gas station right now, given what the price of gasoline is. But on the other hand, as I look around right now, I don't see a charging station anywhere. And that's just one of the problems. We just did a study about what's it going to take for EV adoption, and the number one obstacle is price. So, hmm. you know, we have to get to the point where battery-powered vehicles are this, close to the same price as uh, gasoline-powered ones. So you're, you're looking at, generally speaking, 10 grand more for a, an, an EV compared to a comparable gas-powered car. That's part of why there are federal incentives aimed at steering you to an electric. Governor Whitmer wants to add a state incentive, too. So cost is job one for automakers, though I should point out EVs can be cheaper to keep once you get it home. Guess what? You know, electricity, you know, sort of rule of thumb is about the equivalent of $1.20 a gallon. I mean, yeah. who don't want to fill up at $1.20 a gallon? Now, that still doesn't offset $10,000, but let's assume that as with most technologies like microwave ovens and plasma TVs, the price gets in line eventually. Next on the list, we'll be tackling what's known as range anxiety. Can you make it to the next charger? John McElroy believes that's a matter of time. If you go back over 100 years ago, there were no gas stations. If you wanted gasoline for your horseless carriage, you had to go look for a pharmacy or a drugstore. And they, they sold them in big tins or big glass uh, jugs. But the demand was there. The gas stations followed. And the same thing's going to happen with electric cars and electric charging stations. For now, there's no getting around it. Being a first adopter requires commitment. I took a trip to West Virginia uh, recently in my Tesla. All told, it was a round trip to Tesla. It took me two hours longer to go to Charleston, West Virginia and back from Detroit simply because it took that much longer to charge the vehicle on the road. That's affecting the accept uh, acceptability of EVs in general. Help is coming from Issam Mudawar. He's a mechanical engineering professor at Purdue who may have part of the answer. He's working with Ford on, yes, the battery and yes, the charger. But the big key the cable in between. In most situations, you have system designers. They put the electronics as a top priority. They look at the mechanical packaging. And then thermal management is always an afterthought. Have you ever been charging something and it feels hot? Maybe it's your phone, maybe it's a computer, maybe it's the charging brick itself. Well, you've bumped up against the conundrum of thermal management, and it's a problem whether you're charging a phone, running a nuclear plant, or charging an electric vehicle. But Mudawar has developed a cable that is gel-cooled that is a real game changer. He says it would fully charge an electric vehicle in five minutes, and he thinks he'll have it ready next year. The five-minute charging that we talked about is by no means the limit. We can actually go below that. <laughs> a five-minute charge would be a revolution, but that revolution will have to include more chargers in more convenient places, too. So things will improve. Oh, and the cars will, too, even while they're sitting still. My car gets better every month. I get over-the-air updates like my phone. All this stuff is new. My car is literally getting newer, better, just like my phone every month. 
Yeah, that is part of the Tesla impact. These software uh, downloads that keep improving the car. You know, when Tesla first was struggling to meet its orders that it had, the old guard car industry was kind of laughing a little bit. Yeah, it's not easy to put out a make out a lot of cars. Well, nobody's laughing at Tesla anymore. Kimberly and Jason. Right, yeah, so so true. That's one of the things I love is is when you get a software update and you're looking to see what's yeah. new. It's like being a kid in the candy store. Devin, one thing, uh, as you mentioned, we're both EV drivers. One other problem we're confronting, and I didn't realize this when I bought the car, the difference between summer driving and winter driving. There's a difference. Yeah. It's pretty dramatic. Uh, for instance, on my Mustang, I was getting over 300 miles of range uh, when the summer, when, when the weather is warm in the summertime. On really, really cold days, it's more like 170. The yeah. battery degradation is a really big issue. I'm lucky I live about 10 miles from work, so I, I don't struggle with that as much as some other people might. But you and I are both going to be waiting for the software update that addresses that one day. In, indeed. All right, Devin, thank yeah. you.